Welcome to Lamb of God Lutheran Church on this fourth Sunday in Lent. Our sermon is titled Genesis, Noah, God's Do-Over and is presented by Pastor Skip Nazinski. Welcome to our worship service. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. As we continue to travel to the cross during the season of Lent, we look to the cross and reflect on our sinfulness and upon our need for Jesus, our Savior. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God to all of you. And in this stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Please join in the reading of the intro. My eyes are ever toward the Lord, for he will pluck my feet out of the net. One thing I have of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For he will hide me in the shelter of the day of the trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will lift me high upon a rock. And now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me. And I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever. Amen. My eyes are ever toward the Lord, for he will pluck my feet out of the net. The Lord be with you. 
Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, your mercies are new every morning, and though we deserve only punishment, you receive us as your children and provide for all our needs of body and soul. Grant that we may heartily acknowledge your merciful goodness, give thanks for all your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our Old Testament reading is from Genesis chapter 7, beginning at the 11th verse. In the 600th year of Noah's life, on the 17th day of the second month, on that day all the springs of the great deep burst forth, and the floodgates of heaven were opened. And the rain fell on the earth forty days and forty nights. On that very day, Noah and his son, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, together with his wife and the wives of his three sons, entered the ark. They had with them every wild animal according to its kind, all livestock according to their kinds, every creature that moves along the ground according to its kind, and every bird according to its kind. Everything with wings, pairs of all creatures that have the breath of life in them, came to Noah and entered the ark. The animals going in were male and female of every living thing, as God had commanded Noah. Then the Lord shut him in. This is the word of the Lord. Please join in the reading of the gradual. O come, let us fix our eyes on Jesus the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Our epistle is from Ephesians beginning at the fifth verse, eighth verse, I'm sorry. For at one time we were darkness, but now we are light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light, For the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. And try to discern what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of the things that they do in secret. But when anything is exposed by the light, it becomes visible. For anything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Awake, O sleeper. And arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. This is the word of the Lord. Be we will now hear from the bell choir.
We're going to delay a little bit for the children's message. Uh, please stand now. We'll read the verse together. With you is the fountain of life. In your light do we see light. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the ninth chapter. We be to thee, O Lord. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, It was not that this man sinned or his parents, but that the works of God might be displayed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Having said these things, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva. Then he anointed the man's eyes with the mud and said to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. So he went and washed and came back seeing. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar were saying, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some said, It is he. Others said, No, but he is like him. He kept saying, I am the man. So they said to him, then how were your eyes opened? He answered, The man called Jesus made mud and anointed my eyes and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. So I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, Where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. So the Pharisees again asked him how he had received his sight. And he said to them, he put mud on my eyes, and I washed, and I see. Some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God, for he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, how can a man who is a sinner do such things? And there was a division among them. So they again said to the blind man, what do you say about him since he has opened your eyes? He said, he is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight, until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked them, Is this your son who you say was born blind? How then does he see? His parents answered, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind. But how he now sees, we do not know, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him. He is of age. He will speak for himself. His parents said these things because they feared the Jews. For the Jews had already agreed that if anyone should confess Jesus to be Christ, he was to be put out of the synagogue. Therefore, his parents said, he is of age, ask him. So for the second time, they called the man who had been blind and said to him, give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered, whether he is a sinner, I do not know. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. They said to him, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I have told you already, and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? And they reviled him, saying, You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses. But as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, Why, this is an amazing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, God listens to him. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a man born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, You were born in utter sin, and would you teach us? And they cast him out. Jesus heard that they had cast him out, and having found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and it is he who is speaking to you. He said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. Jesus said, For judgment I came into this world, that those who do not see may see, and those who see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard these things and said to him, Are we also blind? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no guilt. 
But now that you say we see, your guilt remains. This is the gospel of our Lord. We confess our faith together with the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated as we sing. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
How many of you have ever played golf? Keep your hands up. Now, how many of you play golf well? Keep your hands up. <laughs> Sounds about right. No hands. I used to play quite a bit when I was younger, back in my high school days, and I wasn't very good. And then one day, I went out and I shot a better round than I normally do. So I started to think, hey, this game's not as difficult as I thought. So I practiced some more, practiced some more, and then I went back out again, and I was back to my old bad ways. Whoever invented golf must have been the greatest marketing person of all time, even more than McCullough here with, you know, creating a city in the middle of the desert. You know, when you think about the, the golf, you know, golfers always think that they could do better. You know, maybe you buy a ball that flies farther or straighter, or you get a new set of clubs that could hit the ball farther, have a, a, a bigger sweet spot on the club head. Now, I haven't golfed much lately, but I enjoy going out sometimes, and with our two sons, they don't really golf at all, but you know, often for Father's Day or something, we would just go together, play around the golf together, and we always went to a course where there was no one else around. <laughs> there was no one on the tee behind you, like rushing you. And so sometimes, you know, since we, we weren't very good and our sons barely played at all, you know, they would, we would take a few extra shots. Sometimes in, in golf, there's something called a mulligan. Does anyone know what mulligans are? Yeah. Mulligans are not in the official rules of golf. A mulligan is when you swing and maybe the ball just dribbles a few feet away, or maybe even you swing and miss. You say, oh, we're not going to count that one. You just put another ball, and you just hit again, and you don't count it. That's a mulligan. You get a do-over. Well... These last three weeks, we've been talking about Genesis, and we heard in the, in the creation account that God created everything, and what he created, he proclaimed to be very good. So that was week one. Then we heard about Adam and Eve's fall into sin, and things weren't so very good anymore. And then last week, we saw this downward spiral of sin continue with Cain murdering his brother Abel. And today we hear about Noah. This is a story of two mulligans, God's do-over and Noah's do-over. In the chapter right before our reading today, this wasn't part of our reading, we hear this. The Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intention of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. So just think about that. The wickedness of humankind and what was on people's hearts, evil continually. And then in the next verse, and the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him to his heart. So God is saddened. God is hurt. God is grieving by how corrupt human beings have become because of their sin, because of their rebellion against God. So think about the progression that we had. Back in Genesis chapter 1, no sin at all. Then Adam and Eve eat the fruit. And then we see the first murder, Cain and Abel. And then we see total wickedness, corruption, depravity of the human race. And we're only in the sixth and seventh chapter of the Bible, in the book of Genesis. I mentioned to you before that pretty much every person has heard the story of creation about Adam and Eve, whether they believe it or not. Most people have also heard about Noah and the ark. Now, we have children's storybooks about this. Often, we have a, a nice picture of the ark. Maybe the giraffe is on the upper deck, and the giraffe's neck is out the window on the top deck. You know, we, we have uh, the cute animals lined up there. 
Our church nursery has a painting on the, the side wall back there, Noah and the ark, and the carpet in the nursery also is Noah, all the animals, all the cute animals, and this picture makes us smile. But think about what really happened. The story of Noah isn't some G-rated movie that's suitable for young viewers. It would be unrated because of the, the terror, the destruction, and death. The story of Noah's Ark is a story of judgment. So if you're doing sermon notes, that's your first one, the fill in the blank. The story of Noah's Ark is a story of judgment. God is judging sin with that flood. Sin is being punished. But not only do we see God's judgment because of the sin of humankind, we also see God's grace. We see God's grace because we see God showing his grace to Noah's family. Remember Noah's family? We have Mrs. Noah, right? We got the three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And then there are three wives. So there's only eight people in this family. And God is showing them his grace and mercy in that ark. So God spares just a few humans, not that many animals, and they get a divine do-over. Water comes up from under the ground. Water comes pouring from the skies for 40 days and 40 nights and water destroys the sinful inhabitants of the earth. God does a do-over. He starts over with Noah and his family, which means that we are not just descendants from Adam and Eve. All of us, we are descendants of Noah and Noah's family as well. I want to point out three things today that we can observe about God. God's character from this account of Noah. Number one, God cares for his creation. So think about this. So despite the judgment, despite God's wrath over sin, God is still caring for Noah and his family. And we sometimes, we have hardships in life. And we say, yeah, but things are going to get better when we're in heaven and things like that. And that's true. But God continues to care for us in this life, lives that are often filled with struggles and hardships. Yes, we do look forward to the new heaven and the new earth and immortal bodies and no more sin and all that stuff. But until then, we deal with life in the here and now, lives that are often filled with adversity. And rather than God giving up on his created human race, Instead, God preserves the human race, rescues, saves the human race through Noah, and then through the promised offspring of Eve, Jesus, who would be born later, who'd also be a descendant of Noah's family. Second observation about God's character is that God keeps us safe. In the last verse of our reading today, we heard and the Lord shut him in. The Lord shut Noah and his family in the ark. Julie and I were at the Ark Encounter, the replica museum of Noah's Ark in Kentucky. And the door on the side of the ark was like gigantic, uh, even hard to describe it. And I wasn't sure how they would have closed that door anyway, but God is the one who seals the door closed to save Noah and his family. This is a divine door closing, an act of God's grace. Now, Noah isn't sinless by any means. If we were to, this is Genesis chapter 7. If you go to chapter 9 and the, the land dries out, Noah and his family get off the ark, Noah plants a vineyard, gets the wine, gets drunk. You know, we see Noah's not a sinless guy. But here we are, we have uh, Noah's in the ark for over a year. Now, I went deep sea fishing one time. I was seasick. This was like overnight. And, you know, could you imagine the ca cabin fever being there 
Um, imagine it probably didn't smell that good uh, on there with all those animals. And, you know, sometimes you think of, like, your dog may have troubles when there's a storm outside and all the noises that the animals make and things like that. And you wonder when this is going to end. We're told that on the second month, the 27th day, the earth dried out. So God did his divine door closing a little over a year before that, before they get out of the ark. So they were there for over a year. God trusted, or Noah trusted God. Noah obeyed God. Noah believed in God, what God had told him about this pending judgment upon this flood. Now, it took faith to build that ark. You know, imagine, I, people are probably making fun of him, like, what are you, what are you up to? It's not even raining. You know, what, are you, what are you thinking? But Noah somehow had that faith, and it was a God-given faith. We can't do things on our own. I was telling the, um, the worshipers last night, we have 13 and 14-year-olds who go through confirmation, and we ask them during their confirmation rite, we say, are you willing to suffer all, even death, rather than fall away from your faith? That's a hard question, isn't it? Especially 13 and 14 year olds. Hard question for us at our ages. And so the way to answer that question in confirmation and now is yes, with the help of God. That's what Noah had. That's what Noah's family had. It took faith to build that ark. And imagine the people that once the rain started, you know, and the doors closed, God did his divine door closing, that people outside would have been like pounding on the side of the ark, you know, trying to get in. But it was too late. God had already closed the door. The flood was God's judgment on sin. God's will is being done. God is doing a do-over, and Noah and his family are saved purely by God's grace. When we pray the Lord's Prayer, we pray, thy will be done. We pray for God's protection. Life doesn't always go the way that we plan, but God promises to watch over you and bless you and guide you. Which brings us to number three. God blesses and saves through adversity. You know, despite what was going on there, God was bringing about a new start. God was bringing about a new life for humankind. This is a divine mulligan, a do-over. God is blessing. God is saving. God is active to Noah and his family, and God is active on your behalf as well. Yes, we also face adversity, that's why Jesus taught us the Lord's Prayer, because we need God's help every day. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us what we need for each day. We pray, deliver us from evil. We may wonder when our problems are going to end, but we're called to trust that God is with us, that God is for us, as Noah was called to trust in God as well when God gave Noah those plans for the ark. As we face diversity, God may be growing us in a way that will lead us to serve him in a different way. He promises to be with you every step of the way, whatever you may be going through. You know, the cute children's story of Noah and the ark and the animals that's also a story of adversity. Another blank on your sermon notes. The story of Jesus is also a story of adversity as well. Jesus was a cute little baby in the manger. Jesus lived a life of adversity. He had opponents pretty much wherever he went. Jesus came to suffer and to die and to be rejected by humankind. 
Sin would be judged, and Jesus would take that judgment for us on the cross. And even when he was up there on the cross, people were still mocking him, making fun of him, ridiculing him. On that cross, God was judging the sin of the world. And Jesus took your sins and my sins and the burden of the sin of the world to that cross, and he died for us. Pure grace. We are blessed and saved through Jesus' adversity. Three things to fill in on your sermon notes. In 1 Peter, we hear this. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which he went and proclaimed to the spirits in prison, because they formerly did not obey, when God's patience waited in the days of Noah while the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is eight persons, were brought safely through water. Baptism, which corresponds to this, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Noah's story points to the flood as we go through baptism. Now, usually with a baptism, it's often a little baby, a cute little baby, but actually that baptism could be their first taste of adversity. Paul writes in Romans 6, Do you not know that all of us who've been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. Baptism is a drowning. It is a dying. It is a recreation. Sinful human beings get a mulligan, a do-over in baptism. Now, on the back of your bulletin, we have uh, four screens, I believe they are. In the baptism liturgy, in the, the hymn book, is what's called the flood prayer. And it's Luther's prayer, and there's a place where you insert the name of the child. We're going to read this together, and we're going to insert our own names when we get to that point. So we're going to read together now. Almighty and eternal God, according to your strict judgment... You condemn the unbelieving world through the flood. Yet according to your great mercy, you preserve believing Noah and his family, eight souls in all. You drowned hard-hearted Pharaoh and all his hosts in the Red Sea. You led your people Israel through the water on dry ground, foreshadowing this washing of your holy baptism through the baptism in the Jordan of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. You sanctified and instituted all waters to be a blessed flood and a lavish washing away of sin. We pray that you would behold Skip according to your boundless mercy and bless them with true faith by the Holy Spirit, that through this saving flood, All sin in them, which has been inherited from Adam, in which they themselves have committed since, would be drowned and die. Grant that they be kept safe and secure in the holy ark of the Christian church, being separated from the multitude of unbelievers and serving your name at all times with a fervent spirit and a joyful hope so that with all believers in your promise, they would be declared worthy of eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As God's baptized children, he has promised to care for you. And so as we, as we look to survive this adversity that we go through in this life as God's children, I have four points for you. Number one, be in God's word. As we're in God's word, God works that faith in us, gives us a strength as we face adversity. 
Stronger faith helps us as we struggle. God blesses us and reminds us of his promises in the past as well as for the present and for the future. Number two, be in worship. Worship isn't an optional activity for us. This is where God provides safety and security in the holy ark of his church. This family of believers that he gathers us, that we puts us together in one another's lives as we face struggles, as we need encouragement, so that we could be a blessing to one another. Which leads us to number three, serve. Serve the Lord. As we serve God, serve others, we are being a blessing to others. Others are being a blessing to us as well. We are blessed to be a blessing. And last but not least, number four, Invite others into the family. I imagine it was hard for Noah. You know, he had friends that weren't on that ark that were perishing. We think about what, what we hear in John's Gospel, chapter 3. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Jesus wants all all his people in the boat, in the ark. The door of the church is open. No divine door closing, shut out that people can't come in. God wants all to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. The ark finally lands on dry ground and creation gets that do-over. Now why Noah? Why his family? It was all by God's grace. God chose to show Noah and his family his mercy. Every day as God's children, we're blessed that he gives us another mulligan. Every day as we confess our sins, we see that God's mercies are new every morning, that his compassions never fail. Great is his faithfulness. When you hear God forgive you your sins, he's giving you that divine do-over again. You get a fresh start. You get another day to live in God's grace. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. We continue now with our offering. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for these offerings. We ask your blessing on the offerings, Lord, that they may serve effectively in your earthly kingdom. Amen. Please rise for the offertory. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, your mercies are new every morning. Grant that we may heartily acknowledge your merciful goodness, give thanks for all your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Holy Lord, pride led us to rebel against you and choose our own way instead of your gracious path. Keep us from the sin of pride, of thinking too highly of ourselves, and to think about and show mercy to others. Instill within us the humble heart of faith that trusts in your word, and bear within us the obedience of faith that delights to follow where you lead. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, you are the strength of the weak, the consolation of those who suffer, the peace of those troubled, and the hope of those in the hour of death. Grant your healing and strength to all for whom we pray. Lord, in your mercy. 
Into your hands, O Lord, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. We will hear from the chancel choir. choir thank you for um, your prayers for for our son michael he has a very blurry vision in his left eye and we think his doctor said it was a side effect of conjunctivitis when he had covid in december and the one eye he went he arrived in weatherford texas last monday he's on a five-week physician assistant rotation as he continues uh, his student uh, training and so he looked for an ophthalmologist to go to and this was on the website of his ophthalmology. It's two Christian uh, brothers who have the practice. The intricacy of the human eye has often been cited as evidence of design by a purposeful creator. Even Darwin confessed, the eye to this day gives me a cold shudder because of its inexplicable, irreducible complexity and contradiction to his theories. Common objects that resemble the eye haunted him to the point that he wrote, the sight of a feather in a peacock's tail, whenever I gaze at it, makes me sick. However, for those of us who believe all of nature and even our own steps are ordained by a wise and loving creator, the intricacy of the human eye, like the feather of the peacock, is a thing of beauty to uphold, to behold. Whether the thought of this extraordinary sphere fills us with awe and wonder or gives us the cold shudder, we all agree that vision is one of our most important and cherished senses. At Sawyer Eye Center, we consider it a great privilege and responsibility to care for your beautifully complex gift of sight. Imagine that. That's our homepage as you're looking for uh, medical care. Um, please stand now as we continue with the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. And with my spirit. 
Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is good and right so to do. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord who overcame the assaults of the devil and gave his life as a ransom for many, that with cleansed hearts we might be prepared joyfully to celebrate the Paschal Feast in sincerity and truth. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. We now pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of many. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of our Lord be with you always. Amen. Please be seated. Please stand as we sing the Nunc Dimittis.
give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. And his mercy endureth forever. Jesus said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. Lord, help us to see the challenges and responsibilities to reach the lost all around us. Jesus said, go and baptize the nations in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Use us, Lord, to extend your kingdom and to be your witnesses. Jesus said, go and teach the nations to observe all that I have commanded you. Jesus said, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Please be seated as we sing. We have a few announcements. Uh, one is the Slot Canyon trip uh, led by Larry Schmidt is tomorrow morning at nine o'clock. I assume Larry's gonna be back there a little bit to the right, there's a sign up sheet. Uh, he has a lot more information to share with you for that. If you turn to the very back page of your announcements, if you took the paper copies, at the top, Easter Lilies uh, deadline is Palm Sunday, April 2nd, if you'd like to dedicate some. Uh, the ladies group is having their pennies from heaven. Collection date is next weekend, so get those in. Uh, third down on the list, housing for Manya. Uh, Bob and Mary White have been so gracious to provide their RV for Manya. Uh, they'll be going away in the RV at the beginning of April. So Manya, if you could help with uh, housing for her until she gets a longer term plan, please let us know. And uh, earlier in the announcements, there's some people, if, if People need a ride to worship if you know of anyone that either they don't drive at night or for any church event or worship, uh, let us know. And if you're willing to be a driver for people, uh, please let us know as well. Uh, Deacon Dennis, we have, do you have the mic? You yeah, can, is this coming through? Uh, if you came, when you came into the church on the left side as you entered in, uh, there's a big thermometer there. It's a, it's a money monitor is what it is. Uh, Sometime back, the, uh, your church council uh, voted that we should have a, uh, we should make some donations to the food bank and help them out. Uh, they've fallen on hard times right now, and uh, some current information from them uh, about them is that they've got 30% uh, more uh, people applying for food and 60% uh, less donations. 
that doesn't match out real well in anybody's math. But uh, so we uh, said, let's give, let's provide ten thousand dollars to the food bank for food. They can get the most out of the buck for it because they buy volume out of out of a Phoenix. And uh, so rather than trying to buy uh, things here, and so we did that. We come up with five thousand dollars on that thermometer. It's a, a zero to ten. We're at five. We're at five thousand dollars. We want to go to ten. But we make, gave them a check Friday for 5000 and they were extremely happy to get it. It really got, got things rolling. So uh, if you find it in your heart and as you, in, in, your, in your wallet, uh, if you find it in your heart and pray about it, uh, help them out. They have a lot of people. They feed between 350 and 400 people a day. And uh, that's just incredible uh, here in Lake Havasu. Uh, times are getting a little tough. The markets have been unsteady, and for those who rely on uh, the markets for their income, uh, some of those donations have cut down, and it's unstable at the best, you know. So uh, that's caused, caused a 60% reduction in donations is a lot. That's a lot. And they put out a lot of food, and good food. So, uh, but it's, it's keeping people going. Sometimes they just need that to get them, keep them on top of things. So if you will uh, consider, and uh, each week we'll uh, add some more red uh, paint on there for the, the goal that we're coming up to. So uh, keep that in mind as you go by it and uh, think about it and pray about it and uh, help those who are in need. Thank you. Just a reminder to the women, uh, Linda and I will be gone this next week, so there will not be a women's Bible study on Thursday morning. We will resume the following Thursday, okay? Uh, and that's a good reminder on the food bank. A lot of people have made comments like, well, we see expensive cars going in and out of there. And I was talking with Howard about that, and it turns out there's a number of people who do pick up food, but they take it and distribute it to people who can't come into the food bank. So there's a lot of that going on, a lot of volunteers. So I try not to be judgmental of it, but they really do need our help. Okay. Thank you. Two more Wednesday nights uh, worship, 5.30, uh, Lenten worship, meal follows. And then on the front page of your announcements at the bottom, our Easter weekend plan, Holy Week plan. So take a look at that. Larry? I could really use another couple that could drive to the, uh, for the Slot Canyon. Uh, trip tomorrow if I if there's anybody out there uh, anyway and also I have another announcement I didn't talk to pastor about for some of you that are familiar with the Shepherd's Canyon Retreat Center uh, Lynn and I will be going there um, what Saturday the 25th and we would love to have somebody ride along with us if you're not familiar with the retreat center it it um, started by Dave and Barb Anderson and it's there for pastors that are burnt out or any church workers so anyway um, we would love to have somebody else Normally, Calios go with us, and they're, you know, they can't go in, and some other people. So anyway, oh, there's the slot canyon. Dave, mm -hmm. uh, Mike found him. I didn't brief him on ahead of time. Anyway, if you're not familiar with what's going on up there, come and talk to me out behind. But anyway, I'd like to have some other couple with a vehicle that is comfortable to drive on an unimproved road. <laughs> Thank you, Larry. Have a blessed week, everyone. Bible study, book of Genesis in the back, uh, coffee and snacks, so please join us. If anyone would like a personal or private prayer, I will be up here at the front to do so. Go with God's blessing. We pray our message of hope from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ lifts you up and strengthens you for the coming week. Have a blessed week. For information about us, please visit our website at lambofgodlhcaz.org. That's Lamb of God. LHCAZ.org.